Let's do this problem. A batsman scored some singles, some fours and some sixes in a cricket match. The number of singles made by a batsman is three times the number of fours scored by the same batsman. The batsman also scored a few sixes. The batsman scored a total of 84 runs. We have to form a linear equation based on batsman's total score in terms of number of singles and sixes scored by the batsman. So this is important. We have to form a linear equation only in terms of singles and sixes scored by the batsman. Fours are not included in the linear equation. And second is, we have to use the equation to find the number of singles, fours and sixes scored by the batsman. Let's see the approach for doing this problem. The score of the batsman will be equal to runs made through singles plus run made through fours plus run made through sixes. We can start solving our problem with three variables but as asked in the question finally we should have only two variables in the equation. Let's now look at the second part of the question where we need to find the exact number of singles, fours and sixes. Also, number of sixes hit by the batsman can be 1, 2, 3 or any number but it cannot be 0 as stated in the question. Let's explore these possibilities using the graph of the equation which we have to make in the first part of the question. With this approach, let's complete the solution. Let x be the number of singles, y be the number of fours and z be the number of sixes scored by the batsman. Therefore, total score of the batsman will be equal to x plus 4y plus 6z. It is given that total score is equal to 84. So this implies x plus 4y plus 6z is equal to 84. But according to the question, we cannot have three variables here. We need to express the total score only in terms of singles and sixes. So we need to eliminate y here. It is given in the question that number of singles that means x is equal to 3 times the number of 4s that means x is equal to 3y. This implies y is equal to x by 3. So putting this here we will have this implies x plus 4 in place of y we will write x by 3 plus 6z is equal to 84. This implies on simple calculations we will simplify the equation as 7x plus 18z is equal to 252. So this is the required equation. As discussed in the approach let's try to make a graph for this. Let's understand the approach for the second part of the question which is to find the exact number of singles, fours and sixes. For making the graph, we require at least two points. So for obtaining two points, first we will put x is equal to 0 and then obtain the corresponding value of z. So put x is equal to 0. This implies z will be equal to 252 by 18 that is equal to 14 and then we will put z is equal to 0 and obtain the corresponding value of x so this implies x will be equal to 252 by 7 that will be equal to 36 Therefore, two points are 0, 14 and 36, 0.
so this is the graph which we have obtained using these two points along x axis we have number of singles along y axis we have number of sixes and in this graph in green here we have shown the value of sixes when the value of sixes is very near to the whole number values so from this graph we can see that there can be infinite solution pairs but all of these will not fit into the context which is provided in the question according to the question number of sixes and singles cannot be zero also number of sixes a number of singles should be whole number values they cannot be decimal values with these things in mind let's find the solution from the graph from this graph only whole number value of sixes which we can obtain is 7 and for which we have a corresponding value of 18 singles which is also a whole number value so this is the only whole number pair of sixes and singles we can obtain from the graph. So number of sixes is 7, number of singles is 18 and number of fours that is 1 by third of number of singles will be 1 by third of 18 that is 6. We can verify our answer here. 7 into 6 plus 18 into 1 that is singles plus 4 is 6. So 6 into 4 is, if we calculate this, it indeed comes equal to 84. Let's summarize what we have learned in this video. We have learned framing linear equations based on real life context. Also, we have learned selecting the right solution pair for the real life context using graphs of the equation.